Does technology actually kill jobs? While automation doesn't really seem to reduce the overall number of jobs in an economy, there are numerous professions that have entirely disappeared, primarily due to technological innovation. If you're worried about losing your job due to a major future technological shift, it makes sense to look at some case studies from the past and ask how historical waves of automation led to the economy we have today. Anxiety over technology and automation as drivers of job and wage losses has been a common theme in our culture pretty much since the Industrial Revolution. The word Luddite, typically used to describe someone as anti-technology or anti-progress, has its roots in the Luddite labor movement. This was a group of skilled weavers in 19th century England who broke the machinery that was being used to replace them. The problem with this machinery in the eyes of the Luddites wasn't just that it might reduce the overall number of jobs, but that it meant that highly skilled, well-compensated artisans could be replaced with easily interchangeable, low-paid machine operators for programmable looms. And they weren't entirely wrong. While there are still plenty of people employed in the garment industry today, very few of them are in the UK and the global market is dominated by shoddily constructed clothes made of cheap, low-quality textiles that are designed to avoid many sewing, knitting, and crocheting techniques that machines struggle to imitate. Even modern forms of automation, like AI, are often supported by small armies of overseas workers, such as Amazon's Just Walk Out program, where customers could just grab an item off the shelf and leave. These stores relied on a large number of support workers reviewing transactions and tagging footage with metadata for training in order to create this supposedly cashierless experience. But of course, there are a lot of jobs that were successfully deleted by the rise of mechanization. Some have been so thoroughly obliterated that it's hard for us to even recognize that once upon a time, those jobs must have existed. One example is that of a knocker-upper, which just so we're clear, has nothing to do with pregnancy. Getting knocked up by the mailman used to mean something very different. Prior to the invention and proliferation of cheap and reliable mechanical alarm clocks, there used to be an entire profession of night owls who went around knocking on doors and windows early in the morning to ensure that other people woke up on time. They typically carried a long, light stick to wrap on the windows of bedrooms on the upper floors, though some were known to carry pea shooters so that they could shoot dry peas at the windows instead. I don't know how you're supposed to hit snooze. Probably had to go down there and fight them. The profession of knocker-upper actually lasted a lot longer than you might think. It had mostly died out by the 1940s, but still existed in some areas of England until the 1970s. Another example of a less old-timey occupation that was created and then destroyed by a single invention is switchboard operators. The profession's heyday was only a few short decades, with the first operator hired in 1878 and automated exchanges introduced in the 1890s and proliferating through the early 1900s. This profession, again, hung on for a surprisingly long time, with some manual central office switchboards lasting until the early 90s in a few rural areas. But if this all feels like ancient history, what about the professions that have died within living memory of people younger than me? We'll tell you after we thank Backblaze for sponsoring today's video. Backblaze is an affordable and easy to use cloud backup solution that starts at just $9 a month. They make it simple by allowing you to back up almost anything for your Mac, PC, or business workstations and access it anywhere in the world with their web and mobile apps. Backblaze also lets you restore your data by web or even by mail. This is perfect for this episode. They'll ship a hard drive with your data right to your door and after you're done you can return the hard drive for a refund they even have us covered we actually back up our servers to backblaze nightly so be like us and sign up and get a 15-day free trial with no credit card required today at backblaze.com slash techwiki a more modern profession that has declined significantly over the last several decades is that of TV repair technicians. Don't get me wrong, they're still around and many of them have simply broadened their skill sets rather than just specializing purely in televisions. However, the demand for television repair has significantly decreased, in part because the average television sold has become both cheaper to buy and more complicated to repair. That complication is partially due to the advent of smart TVs and teensy tiny integrated electronics, but also due to a lot of intentionally repair hostile design. Likewise, televisions improve fast enough from year to year that many users simply choose to buy a new and improved model rather than fixing their broken device. Televisions used to be an expensive, valuable appliance, but there's been a distinct cultural shift where we've started to treat them as disposable, and it's had a measurable impact on independent repair jobs. Here's another fun one. 
We tend to forget that once upon a time, the word computer did not refer to a machine brain. A computer was a person whose job was to compute. The term originates in the 17th century when scientists and observatories would hire assistants to perform all the tedious mathematical calculations needed to make astronomical predictions. The original astronomy supercomputer was literally just a room full of dudes doing math. By the end of the 19th century, however, nearly all computers were women, primarily because computing was seen as a rote menial work and well-educated men didn't want to do it. As discussed in the 2016 film Hidden Figures, NASA launches in the late 1950s and early 1960s relied on female human computers to calculate trajectories and orbital mechanics. One of the first things modern computers replaced was computers. What all the jobs we've already mentioned had in common is that they were mostly blue collar trades or low status white collar positions. They definitely required their own degree of skill, but we've largely become accustomed to the idea that manufacturing and other physical jobs can and eventually will be automated. An important factor that distinguishes the newest threat of automation though, is that it increasingly seems to be that knowledge based white collar jobs are equally at risk. So expect to read a lot of maudlin think pieces about. That's what happens when writers get fired and have too much time on their hands. Machine translation and computer assisted DIY legal and accounting services still haven't hit the point where they're a one to one replacement for an actual human professional, but there's gonna be a tipping point where these automated services are good enough for basic tasks and cheap enough that the remaining quality gap won't matter to a lot of people who need these services. And for some of these jobs, it's already happening. Artists are in a similar position. You're still gonna need human beings to make good art, but it's quite likely that you'll be able to make more good art faster with fewer people. It's also already clear that a lot of people don't care about the quality and consistency gap between generated art and professional art from a human artist. And those people are just gonna go with the cheaper option. If all this history has you feeling a little depressed, it's worth repeating that none of these waves of automation or disappearing professions actually appear to have reduced the overall percentage of people with jobs. In fact, high levels of automation in a country tend to correlate with high levels of workforce participation, not the opposite. It's possible that this round will be different and we really will see automation push a large percentage of people into unemployment, but everything we've learned from history says otherwise. Besides, you can always become a streamer. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, maybe you'll also like this one about Amish computers. They exist. Don't forget to like and subscribe.